Hi everyone, it's Nona Grace, and I'm from Western New York. Today has been a rather chilly day. My husband would disagree with me, but it's been a little bit on the chillier side. I've worn long sleeves all day, and when I went outside, I stayed close to the house because the breeze was just too breezy and chilly feeling to me. And close to the house, I'm in the sunshine and blocked from the breeze, and it felt good to me. Well, today I was doing some more thinking I do a lot of thinking. Um, but first of all, I'll tell you what I did this morning. I finally went to the gym to um, sign up because I have the silver sneakers. I wanted to call it slippers because it, it makes more sense to me. But I have the silver sneakers and um, I can go to a gym. So I went down today and I was thinking that the front door should be in the front of the building to get in but no it's at the back door and I had parked in the back parking lot walked around the building found out that the door is not there and I had to go all the way back around to where I parked there was the entry so I went in and I filled out the um, paperwork that had to be filled out and she asked me what I wanted to be called well I wrote my name as Mary Grace and I put a small g she goes is it a small G or a big G? And I says, well, I said, it's a big G if it's legal papers. If it's a, it's a small G, if it's just where I wanna make sure you're gonna call me my correct name. So she wrote it with a small G so that people will call me my proper first name. And then um, I didn't stay to do any exercises. I did see a few people that I knew, which, I knew I would see people because it's a small town and you're bound to run into somebody. And I saw three people that I knew. Well, that's what I did this morning. And then I came home and then I answered my comments, some of them, and I watched some videos. And then when my husband came home, I was cooking some bacon and I asked him to finish the bacon, which he did. And I went and finished my comments and watched a few more videos so that I could get caught up because I goofed off this morning. I didn't do my work. I was out gallivanting instead. Well, today when I was thinking and what I, well, actually Bob was talking about community and how we should know our neighbors and how do you, do you know your neighbors well enough to know that if someone passed away that you could bring them a casserole or something um, or help them if they have something that needs to be done like my husband went over to the the one neighbor he needed some ditches dug because his drainage wasn't quite well and it was two houses over and the neighbor came over and asked if he wouldn't mind doing it and so Jim went over and did it and the guy wanted to pay him and he says no this is a neighbor thing we just do it because we're neighbors and so the guy appreciated Jim doing the work and um, then while I was outside, I sat outside today in my, what I call my she building. Well, others have called it my she, my she shed. And it's where my crafts are and it's been locked up for like two years and I haven't really opened it up to try to sell the stuff that's in there. So I opened it up and one of the, a bike came by, a guy on a bike and he bicycle. stopped by, huh? Bicycle. Bicycle, yeah, bicycle, not a not a motorcycle. This is a trike. This is a two wheel pedal yourself kind of bike. He stopped by, and he wanted to just check to see if I had any records, any thirty three records, which I don't in the building. I have seventy eight, I think is what they would be. The the old old records. And he said that he was a neighbor, and I thought, gosh, I don't know you. He lives two miles away. But, you know, in the country, everybody's your neighbor, even though they are maybe two, three, four miles away. But I hadn't met him because he's newer to the area. And um, so it was kind of nice to meet someone that I didn't even know was in the area. He came from the city, and when his, uh, I guess when his mother remarried, they went to the country, and now he's out here where we are, which is even more country than what he was uh, when he was younger. Okay, well, the question I was having was, why is it so hard to throw things away, is what I was wondering, because I have so much stuff. And even just pieces of paper, sometimes it's hard to throw away. 
And I was thinking of that. And then I was thinking about what if I had to move, what would I take? You know, if you had to box everything up, would you box everything up or would you just box the things that you knew you wanted to take? That's another thing that I was thinking about. Not, I'm not moving. I'm staying right where I'm, right where I'm at. I'm not moving. Um, and what would life be like if we did have less? I think it would be a lot happier a lot of times. Have you ever noticed when you clean a room and you pick up, where do the kids go to play? In that clean area. They like it where it's clean and they're going to go there. They'll bring, drag all their toys over to that spot and that's where they want to play, the room that's the cleanest. And how can you achieve the life that you long for? Like, I long for empty space. I really like empty space. I like it just clear. I gave away my couch. Actually, I gave away three couches all together. And I gave away some chairs. And I'm really basically down to one sitting room and then the other room that has the television which I have in a cabinet so I can close the doors because I don't even want to see the television. Uh, we sit on balls, or we do have a rocking chair in there if we want to sit on the rocking chair, but we sit on the exercise balls, and that will build good core. What? A straight back. Straight chair. back, and we have a straight back. Chair. But those are, those are basically because I have the um, table that that mission. Um, mission table in there and those chairs match my mission table it's my I would consider it my antique room now my antique room used to be where my sitting room is and now I've moved it to where I was thinking why do I have all these antiques over there far away where nobody can see them because nobody ever goes in that half of the house whereas if you're in the kitchen you would see the room and you'd see my antiques and they're they're nice stuff I think they were just handed down to me from relatives. I did not, I didn't buy any of them. But um, I, that's, that's probably the only room that I would keep everything. And then the other day I pulled, I actually have two dictionaries in there and I pulled out two dictionaries because we were looking up a word, I don't remember what word we were looking up, trying to find it because I didn't want to use the computer. We can use dictionaries. I have reference books and the kids think I'm crazy because I have reference books. Well, I have the yearbooks of, um, every year a yearbook would come out and tell you all the current events and things that happened through the year. And um, I have those up to a certain year and then I, I don't have any more because my mother was getting them is how I ended up with those. And so that's, um, I guess I don't know where I'm going now because I've gone off track. I went from my questions to all that. But um, I also thought of, I have in that she shed, I have a lot of DVDs. And they're, they're not the kind of movies that I would want to watch. They're all blood, guts, and gore. It's awful stuff. And there's, there's 200 of them. So I was thinking, well, you know, probably nobody around here will buy them. So maybe I could put them on eBay and put a good price on them. But then I would have to also put that they'd have to pay for the shipping because shipping is what's going to cost you. Um, mailing out and shipping is expensive and they would be a uh, fairly heavy weight so it would have to cost it maybe the DVDs would be cheap but the shipping would cost a little bit more so I don't know I was just thinking of that too because I've got a lot of them and I've got to get rid of them. I also was thinking and I had told my husband that maybe I should get another building and then just go from room to room and empty my house out and then leave it in that building. And if the building, nothing, if we don't want anything from the building after a year, maybe two, probably two, I would wait because you might have a holiday or something in there that you might need something that's, or a party that you might need something that you took out there and bring back in only what you needed at the time and that would be something that you probably should hang on to and then after it's been sitting there for that length of time have somebody come and buy the lot buy the whole thing and like whatever's in there you get to have for a certain price and that might be a way of emptying my house out because it's and I don't have fancy stuff I says I really don't have anything of value so it's kind of like junk probably should just go to the dump but it's still useful, so that's why it's hard to throw it away. And the crafting room, 
that's a story and a half. That room has a lot of stuff that I've gathered through the years and they're useful, but when you get done making the project, what do you do with the project? I've got a lot of them in that building that you can't even give away. In fact, I have two tables out front with stuff on it for free. And some of it's gone, but not all of it. I wish it would all go, but it's not going to. And I'm thinking that maybe I should just open up the building and, and have a thing, put post a thing on maybe Facebook or something. I don't use Facebook very often. In fact, I rarely go on there. And maybe post that this day, come and check out the building and whatever you like you can have, except for this one wall. <laughs> It's got my purses that I made. I don't want to just give those away. That was a lot of work. And the baskets that I made that out of paper, they were a lot of work. Um, and the bows were a lot of work. <laughs> the rest of the stuff can go. The glassware could go. There's a lot of glassware in there and half of it wasn't mine. It was somebody else's or it was my mother's or it my, was my son. When my son moved away, he did, he did it right. He only took exactly what he needed, and then he left us a house full of stuff. So it took us a couple truckloads to get rid of his stuff. And some of it came here, and a lot of it just went to the dump. We just got rid of it because it was just easier just to dis, just discard it. But that's what he did when he moved. He only took exactly what he needed. And when I moved in, when Jim and I got married, I took exactly three boxes I think it was three three boxes of, of those storage boxes I just had three boxes and then because we had wedding gifts we had another two boxes of stuff that were in those and I had a diagram on the wall to tell me what was in what box so I didn't have to dig through the boxes I could just go on the wall and look at the diagram and say oh you're looking for the the glasses they're in box number four and so you pulled that box number four out and there were the glasses or whatever you were looking for well my clock is bonging and telling me it is time to say goodbye so i didn't drink my coffee i did make coffee for myself and i never did drink it but i'll have the coffee now and i will talk to you all again tomorrow so you have a great evening bye bye bye